This meeting of the Gadsden City Council will now come to order and the chair calls on City Clerk Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilman Harris. Here. Councilman <coughs> Williams is absent today. Councilman Avery. Here. Eccles. Here. Stewart. Here. Councilman Cannon is also absent today. Councilman Reed. Here. We do have a quorum present and the meeting is open for business. Brian Harbison will lead the invocation. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Almighty God, we just thank you for today. Thank you for giving it to us. And we know that uh, you are the provider for everything we need. And we pray that you'll provide wisdom today to these men as they make important decisions for this city. Thank you for your blessings on Gadsden. Pray that we'll continue to keep our focus on you and all we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the work session and council meeting on January the 24th. So moved. Second. Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to approve minutes. Chair, we'll entertain a motion to ratify payment of the accounts for the week of January the 20th through the 26th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to ratify payment of the accounts. Proclamations, Mayor. Unfinished business, we have none today. Number nine, this is a time and place <clears throat> is advertised to conduct a public hearing, allowing anyone to speak in who are in favor of a resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property located at 1419 Jackson Avenue in District 5. The last known owners are Jack D. Clay, Sr. and wife Marjorie D. N. Clay. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Is there anyone who would like to speak in favor of it? Mr. President, I'm Brian Harbison. I think Mr. Clay was here, and yeah, this will be the time to come on up. You want to come up? Come to the microphone and give your name and address, please, sir, to the city clerk. My name is Jack David Clay, and the property is Jackson Avenue. 419, 1419. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. What? Whatever you want to say. Uh, I'd like to get this matter tucked here on where I can get it repaired. I didn't understand what I said. He's I said he wanted to get this matter taken care of so he could do it, make the repairs. <coughs> I think the, you're up against a time situation right now, but we'll hear from both sides. Are you, are you planning on repairing it? Yes, sir. <coughs> when are you going to do that? When are you going to? Uh, immediately. Immediately. Well, I'll do whatever it's you know is required for me to do. Okay, I suggest that uh, after Brian uh, gives us some information about it that you get with Brian and, and more than likely you can work that out before the city uh, baits the nuisance. Have you not gotten anything from Brian Harbison? No, sir. I, I repray, uh, bought it uh, with it condemned and uh, I've just, you know, got all of the, the furniture and they left and cleaned it up and got it ready to start working on. It took them. I'm give him some time. It, it, well, it took them six Brian months to, to get it cleaned out, before I could get the locks changed out on the doors and all their furniture and clothing and all their personal needs out of the home, where I could start working on it. Okay. Well, let's let's hear from Mr. Harbison, and then we'll you'll know something before you leave. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else who would like to speak? in opposition to it. Anyone who would like to speak in favor of it? 
Mr. President, I'm Brian Harbison with the Building Department. We started this case in April of 2010, 20, 22 months ago. There have been no improvements to the property. There was a building permit taken out in July of 2010, 18 months ago, as you can see in the pictures. Relatively have been little or nothing done to the house and the accessory building behind the house. And we're asking today for a resolution to abate this nuisance. Is there anybody else who would like to speak in favor of it? The red, the red is the building in the back. Okay. When did uh, Mr. Clay purchase this property? Do you know, Brian? I'm sure he could tell us if you know. He, he could probably tell you. I know that he did show up on the tile opinion, and uh, and as he stated. I think he knew it was condemned when he when he purchased the property. When did you purchase the property, Mr. Clay? I probably only for about six months. Okay. Okay, what's the pleasure of the council? Brian, if we uh, pass the abate this, uh, how much time would he have? Could he still step in and take care of it before the city did? Uh, does the abate? If, if your desire is to give him some time, uh, he, by his own testimony, he's had it six months. Um, he hasn't, you know, approached us. He knew it was condemned. There are no permits in his name. The previous owner took out the permit in July of 2010. If it's your desire to give him some additional time, I would request that the case be tabled. Because once that resolution's passed, then that sets a series of action in motion. Well, let's, let's, I would suggest maybe a 30-day table on this and, and give him a chance to That's your call. To, to, uh, okay. <laughs> I'll make second some that. improvements. Uh, I'll second it. So I, I, I move for a 30-day table on this. In a second. Okay. Any, any further discussion? Does he understand? <clears throat> I, I'm fixing to well, we'll, tell him. Well, if it passes. In discussion. discussion. <laughs> Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to table the resolution <clears throat> for 30 days, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to table for 30 days. Aye. Mr. Clay, if you would get with Mr. Harbison and make sure you know exactly what you're required to do, you've got 30 days to really make some progress on this. If you don't, the city will obey you. So, thank you. Very good. Okay. <clears throat> Number 10 is our final public hearing is a resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property located 3609 West Megan Boulevard in District 7. The last known owner was Arturo Gonzalez. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Is there anyone who would like to speak in favor of it? Mr. President, we started this case in October of 2010. There have been no improvements. There are no permits to improve, and we're asking today for a resolution to abate this nuisance. <clears throat> the car go with it. That's another, the car go with that, that's another car in another yard. <laughs> Man. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of it? Chair, will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So move. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. Uh -huh. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. New business? Is there any new business? Yes, Mr. President, I have two. The first one is uh, Resolution 2012 050 and 049. I'd like to ask for unanimous consent on these two resolutions. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider both resolutions today, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, consent has been granted. Okay, I move to adopt. Second. Is there any discussion? 
Yes, Mr. President. The first one, <clears throat> 049, is from Pearson Chevrolet. It's a full-size two-wheel drive uh, police pursuit rated sport utility vehicle. And the second one is a uh, from Pearson Chevrolet is a full-size rear wheel police package vehicle. That's the tip for the police department. See any other discussion? I didn't get a chance. I was it crossed my mind upstairs. I didn't ask the question. I think getting away from wheel wheel rear wheel drive vehicles. I, I heard somewhere where they would stop manufacturing those or something. I'm not sure. Somebody help me. Ford on that. Ford went out of it, but that's why we're sticking as long as we can to rear wheel for the safety and the heaviness of. Well, I understand rear. why we're doing it, yeah. but I'm just saying what's going to happen at this point because I understand that they're getting out of the business with those rear. Okay. Chief, what do you think about that? You know, we looked into the, the little Impalas and all that sort of thing, front yeah. wheel drive, and they wouldn't last. Have y'all had any more information on that lately since Ford is not going to make the crowns anymore? Uh, basically, the only information we've had has been that uh, Ford is moving into an area of a police pursuit vehicle that is rear wheel drive, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's available at this time. That's good information. So, so that's great. So yeah. they're going to stop making them for the public, but they're going to do pers police pursuit vehicles. Oh, that's good. Okay. That's good. I, I know there was a study or survey done years back that those front wheel drive pursuit vehicles just didn't hold up. Mm, they didn't. And uh, they, had a, huh? they had a chance to bid on these, and they did, but they were, didn't meet the right. specification. Well, I know they didn't meet the specification because they want the rear wheel. I was just wondering what's going to happen if they stop producing them, and then yeah. we're going Safety to Safety came in big time. If you remember Robert on those little Impala jobs. Yeah, I, I, I know that was a lot of questions about it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. just too light. Horsepower came into play, too, on those Ford vehicles yeah. also. Okay. Yeah. All right. So General Motors will continue to give us what we need. Okay. <laughs> okay. Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor to adopt both resolutions, <clears throat> let it be known as saying aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, <clears throat> motion carries to adopt. Any other new business? Mr. President, I have uh, two items that I would like to ask for unanimous consent consideration to con uh, unanimous consent I get it right there to consider today uh, one's uh, ordinance and one's a resolution documents number 20112 2012 number 56 and 57 I like for unanimous <coughs> consent to consider today second Clerk, can you take the vote those in favor to consider the resolution and the ordinance today let it be number saying aye aye uh -huh. those opposed Consent has been granted. Move to adopt. Second. <coughs> Discussion. Yes, uh, the ordinance is a, is amending the fiscal year budget uh, to reflect grants received ten thousand dollars from Adelaide County Community Development, and the resolution is accepting the ten thousand dollar grant from the Community Development. And it's going to be used for gas and museum. It's going to be used for gas and museum of art. Oh, okay. Any other discussion? <coughs> Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to, to adopt the resolution and the ordinance, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> Motion carries to adopt, adopt both items. Any other new business? Mr. President, I have a uh, resolution here. I'd ask for unanimous consent to consider it. Uh, this is authorizing an agreement to subordinate a mortgage <coughs> on property located at 615 Abercrombie Street. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the resolution today, let it become <coughs> a saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> Consent has been granted. I now ask for passage. Second. Is there any discussion? Yes, we periodically subordinate mortgages on properties uh, when the property owner is in the process of doing some <coughs> refinancing through our <coughs> community development office. Uh, a lot of these houses are uh, houses that we've gone in with community development funds and did some uh, upgrade or uh, work on them. And then the property owner somewhere down the road uh, has a lot uh, more work needs to be done sometime. And sometimes they're just redoing their mortgage uh, because of the interest situation. And so we have to subordinate our mortgage. But that, that's what this is. Any other discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. 
Okay. Any other new business? Okay, Moore, would you like to come to the microphone? Or we still have it first Friday, or is it over for? <laughs> We've got a lot of things going on. Thank you for the opportunity to let everybody know. Uh, I'm going to start it off with Thursday. I hope that you have heard about the Alabama Gives Day that's going to be Thursday, February 2nd. It starts at midnight um, and, then, or, and then goes till midnight on Thursday. This is a Razzle Foundation has done this in several different states. Minnesota in 2011 raised up $13 million. Colorado raised $12 million for nonprofit agencies. So this is going to be Thursday. This is kicking off our weekend. So I would encourage everybody to go to alabamagives.org and find your favorite charity. Of course, I'm promoting downtown Gadsden as my favorite charity, and I would not be uh, probably. I know, I know, but uh, but it's if you. I hope you've heard it on the radio. You heard it on the TV. The uh, it, it's been out a lot everywhere. But please, let's show. We know we're the. We know that we're the city of champions, and we know that Alabama is the national championship of football. So we need to show that we can give too, for that. So that's going to be Thursday. All day from midnight to midnight on Thursday, February 2nd. So go to alabamagives.org and um, find downtown Gadsden or the Cultural Arts Foundation, the Museum of Art. There are a lot of, uh, 13th Place I think is in here, a lot of different uh, nonprofit organizations, probably the Red Cross. Uh, are in there. You can search by name, you can search by zip code, you can search by a lot of different ways, but go check that out and uh, that's on Thursday. Friday is First Friday. It's still, we're still limited on Friday for our First Friday event, but we're going to have a great downtown Gadsden art night, Friday night. It's going to start, it's going to go from uh, 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock, starting at the Hardin Center, where we have a great new exhibit by Craig Wetterspoon upstairs. And then they will progress to the Gadsden Museum of Art uh, from 6 to 7. And there's a, it's, it, they're going back to their selections from their permanent collection at the Museum of Art. So that's going to be a great thing from 6 to 7. And 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock, it'll be at the Walnut Gallery. Probably one of the, another best kept secret. If you don't know where you're going, you can't get there. But it's across from, um, across, actually across Sixth Street, across from Johnson's Giant Foods. You go upstairs, and Mario Gallardo has done a great job with that. Family Patterns, an installation by Lisa Michetti. So that's going to be an art walk on first Friday. There'll be still, the streets won't be closed. It's still a little early for that. But Bill Avery is also having a free concert at the Pittman on Friday night, uh, celebrating his 45 years of music. So that'll be a great event that you can go, uh, the, the music event too. So we're looking forward to a great night. Come downtown and eat and shop and enjoy. Just walk around and see. It's not supposed to rain on Friday, I don't think. So we're going <laughs> to, it'll be limited, but we'll, we'll have a little bit of stuff going on Friday night, but please, the, the, the Downtown Gas and Art Night and then Bill Avery at the Pittman Theater will be two great events you can attend. Then Saturday is our fifth annual chili cook-off. We have, depending on Andy Powell, right now we have 24 teams. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, Andy and the Gadsden Times would make 25 teams the largest chili cook-off we've ever had. So you have to feel sorry for those judges. <laughs> uh, we're going to break it up, though. They're not going to. We're going to break into teams of teams and then go from there. But we'll have a serving of the chili. We'll start about noon in front of the Mary G. Harden Center for Cultural Arts. We will have. Uh, all kind of great things. Buffalo Rock is donating drinks, so when you buy a ticket for chili, you're going to get a free drink to, to help cool your mouth off. Uh, so it's, there, there'll be prizes for the winners. $100 for first place, 50 for second, 25 for third. There'll also be a crowd favorite. That's by the most tickets. And there will be a showmanship award. So the, 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 the weather forecast says there's a possibility of rain. It will go on, rain or shine, unless it, the weather is so bad we can't do it. But, but our intent is to have the chili cook off. It's going to go both directions, a lot of teams, so you'll have a lot of choices. I want to thank, uh, thank the Gaz and Times and the Edinburgh County Tourism Board as our sponsors of this event. So we're just going to have a great weekend. Alabama Gives on Thursday, first Friday with the Art Walk and Bill Avery, and then Saturday with the Chili Cook-Off. So come on down to downtown Gaz and enjoy. Thank you very much. Okay, that entrance to the uh, Walnut Street Gallery is at the back of the building, that isn't is it? Correct. Not yes. in the front, it's yes. at the back on the side That's back there. Correct. Okay. And I already got heartburn. <laughs> Brain and acid. <laughs> okay, department reports, committee boards, are there any? 
Remarks by the mayor and the council. <clears throat> Bill, you want to start? Yeah, that building is used to be gay typewriter, and they had the Oddfellers Lodge upstairs. Watch as you're getting close. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to be an odd fella. Uh oh. The gay typewriter down there. Uh -huh. the uh -huh. um. That's exactly right. That you're looking at the Grand Noble back off. <laughs> uh, oh, I just want to encourage everybody to come on downtown this weekend. It sounds like it's going to be a fun time. The chili cook off's always great, so see you downtown. Ben? <laughs> I got to get through being mad at Bill. Before I can say anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I I wanted this morning to take the opportunity to thank uh, Chief Roy Harbin and his police officers. Uh, specifically, we've been working on Scenic Drive and we've been working on Hines Road ever since I think about 1997 to get it cleaned up, get the hunters off of it, get the four wheelers. And Chief uh, Harbin has come out and helped us tremendously. Uh, we worked up there last week, Chief, I think, how many hours? In the last two weeks. Numerous hours. Uh, numerous manpower was involved in it. And uh, we did uh, get an individual who was trespassing on uh, private property. Uh, he was armed. He was hunting. <laughs> Uh, prior to this, uh, Robert, we had uh, deer shot up there and left in the middle of the road. We had people that came uh, last week or two weeks ago, if you remember, yeah. to our public safety committee meeting yeah. and wanted help in that area. Well, we did stop the man, got him under arm, got him under wraps, and guess what? They refused to prosecute. Who refused to prosecute? The landowners. Oh. Now, let me tell you something. Uh, I think we ought to back our police officers, especially when we ask them for a specific thing that's really giving them a real problem. And shooting up toward Ridge Avenue from Hines Road, we've got that. Hunting on Hines Road inside the city limits of Gadsden, Alabama, is illegal. Besides that, somebody's going to get killed in the process. But then when you come up and you have them in hand and you refuse to prosecute, we are not a private security service. Although this police department will continue the regular patrols and do everything that a police officer is, uh, is sworn to do. But in this case, it was a little bit disheartening to me that that happened. Uh, Chief, I don't know the answer to it except regular patrols carry on like they were. But I'm going to ask the people out there to support this police department. You come up here and ask for something and they follow through, mm -hmm. I think the least you can do is uh, hang in there with them and follow it to the, to the end of that ordinance that is designed to, to protect the citizens against them. On uh, break-ins, we had a lot up there in District 7, as you know, Mayor. Uh, Monte Vista Drive, Bellevue Drive, up on Scenic, all over this town. Uh, I'm an advocate for the carry law with the proper training, but I'm going to tell you all something. I think it's time that we took the guns out of the car at night, roll the windows up, and put the thing on your hip. Because personally, I'm getting tired of coming around in my district and in the city, in the city kicking in doors, robbing people. It's, it's ridiculous. So I think it's time, maybe not vigilante, but I think everybody should be trained in firearms. At least protect your own, I think, what it comes down to. Number one, call 911 and get the police out there. But if all else fails, you're, uh, I think it's your Second Amendment rights are to protect yourself. Anyway, that's all I have. Robert. Ben, tell me it ain't so. I mean... Yeah. The people who came and complained? There's a letter from the sergeant on that police force, on the police force. And he said, I thought, there's one in the, your packet that I gave you in the public safety. Yeah, I, didn't, I hadn't had a chance to look well, at it. Well, I'll read that, and you'll be just about as irate as I was, and I read it the first time. Okay. Right. I did not appreciate it at all. Well, I, I mean, I don't know either. I don't know what else you can do. Um, I mean, we had a group to come and complain. Hopefully, uh, it was just one individual. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the other ones are still vigilant about 
uh, trespassing. I, I hope so. I hope so. I, I hope we don't get somebody caught on some another piece of property and that property owner refused to prosecute too. But then they come and complain to us. So ho hopefully we can get that squared away. But anyway, uh, again, I uh, just wanted to take this opportunity to thank everybody who's called or been concerned about my wife being in the hospital. She's still there, but uh, I think we've got her pretty much back where she needs mm -hmm. to be. She had a stomach virus, and it pretty much threw her electrolytes out. And it takes a while to get those things regulated. So uh, hopefully before the day is over with, the, the doctor will give her a clean bill of health that they uh, regulated there and they're back to normal, whatever that might be, uh, particularly in her case. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, like I said, her blood sugar has been going up and down, but I think they pretty much got it uh, regulated. So we appreciate your prayers and your thoughts. Billy? Thank you. <clears throat> I agree with being, uh, being on the Public Safety Committee, you know, and we had uh, our residents come to us and plead for additional support, additional police coverage uh, to just enforce the laws there. And, and then when we do that, you know, we don't get the desired results. It's kind of disappointing when we could have used all of those 300 some additional hours in the other areas in the city <clears throat> where people would be glad uh, and respond positively to uh, our policemen, our police force uh, enforcing the law. I encourage you to do that. In, at the same time, you know, my thing has been, uh, well, one of my things, uh, has been Peyton Rich and Peyton Road, uh, track the trailers out there. I, I, I just have to continue to remind all of the residents there that when you see that track the trailer, it's going to take this, uh, when you see that track the trailer, as it approaches Peyton Rich, Coming uh, past the junior college there, I encourage you to call the police non-emergency number. That number is 256-549-4578. You must call them in order for us to curb this traffic over there in our neighborhood. Basically, they're just, they're just uh, completely and totally ignoring the signs that we have there and driving on through. And if we can get, uh, the, the more calls we get, the better chances we'll have of catching some of those uh, guys coming through the neighborhood and then they'll get the word out to their fellow drivers that you are not, you should not go into this community because they will have the police stop you and give you a ticket. So all the time you think you've saved by coming through our neighborhood instead of going down 431, you've just lost it plus a fine. So I encourage all the neighbors, everybody on Payton Rich and Payton Road and any other surrounding area where you see this happening, please support us in that endeavor. The, um, the Stroud Avenue project, drainage project, is, is going ahead as, as planned. And our engineering department is moving along with that. Thank you, Chad. Um, and as you know, that is a, a combined uh, project between the city uh, and the county. So we are moving forward on that and hope to give some relief on the drainage uh, in this first phase of the, the drainage problem that we have on Stroud Avenue. The, um, uh, East Gadsden Library is having an open house today at, at 1 o'clock. Uh, I encourage you all to go out and participate. The, the new library is on East Broad between the Bob Eccles Center and the, the Health Department, the building right there on the corner there. So I encourage you to go out and, 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 and uh, enjoy the facilities there and welcome those people to that new location. That's at 1 o'clock today, 1 to 2 today, and any other time that you feel like you have the time, go by and, and, and make the people feel welcome, you know, in their new location. There's parking in the back. And the parking in the back. The entrance in the back. Parking is in the back, and there's ample parking there um, for anybody and all, all people who uh, desire to, 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 to attend this library. And um, last but not least, uh, uh, today is the last day of January. Tomorrow we move into a new, another era of February, which... Uh, we consider the month of February as being the time when we celebrate black history in these United States. It'll be a, you know, we always celebrate it for one month, but it's not just a one month event, it is, a, it is an ongoing event. But wherever you have the opportunity this, uh, during the month of February to pay tribute to those people of color who have made significant, I mean significant contributions to these United States, take that opportunity. Thank you. Mayor. 
<clears throat> yeah, just to follow up a little bit on what Councilman Harris said about the library. We uh, had that building about, well, for a long time, but anyway, about a year and a half ago, I guess it was, it was leaking really bad, the roof. We went over and looked at it with the Public Works employees, and uh, we put a roof on it and got it stopped from leaking, and then all the wood, the framing, the stuff, everything in there was mildew and molded, so we pulled it all out and uh, talked with the library to see if they would be interested in moving there out of the rec center. And uh, the reason being, you have the people and all the kids there at Family Success as well as Even Start, and I think there's another one upstairs. What is it, uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters? Uh, it's a lot more convenient place, a lot safer. And uh, so the library uh, laid out how they wanted it done, and our public works employees did all the work, and they did an outstanding job. It's really nice. So there's a little open house today. We'll have some computers in there for, for the uh, smaller kids. On the even start, I think the parents have to come with them as well. So it, it's going to be a, a big plus for that whole section right there. And uh, on the police, uh, you know, it's really nice to have a chief that uh, – you can tell them about a problem and they respond to it and even know where Scenic Drive is. <laughs> so uh, keep up the good work, Chief, you and your department. Uh, talk to Chief probably just about every day about anything that comes up in my office because we get all the calls and then uh, he handles it and we appreciate it. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. We adjourn. So moved.